You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to a very adversarial podcast of Ask <laughs> Drone You. Uh, my name is Pablo. Pablo, huh? my name is Roberto. And this is episode 686, and we're glad that you're spending a few minutes of your day with us. Adversarial. Interesting. It just goes against the grain. All right. Well, I'm looking forward to it. It doesn't really go against the grain. I mean, it's, it's kind of the law, but, you know, hey, whatever. So. Well, yeah, but, there, but there's some information that we didn't get in this question, although it was a long question. So be prepared, everybody, for the question day. It's a little bit longer. I think kind of like our one, our question yesterday, but it's a good question, and uh, yes, no, nothing. Do you have something? No, I told you uh, I'd be bouncing around a lot today, and I forgot I have to come back for the Skyward interview. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. That's a big one. Stay tuned for that. That's actually, I'm excited for that. I am as well. Um, but anyway, before we get into today's question, which is all about retaining rights to your photos and videos, and what happens if someone snuck a clause in there, and they said, hey, you can't use that for your demo reel. What protections do you have? What does the law say? First and foremost, what I'm about to go over is completely outlined in the Drone Pilot Field Kit. But before we get to today's question, uh, we want to do a special thanks to our friends at Videoblocks.com because Rob loves Videoblocks.com <laughs> forward slash drone. I do love Videoblocks. When he goes out to fly his mm-hmm. new M210 mm-hmm. and, you know, he didn't have enough operators because he can operate two cameras on that bad boy at once and... There was only one other operator with him there, and he didn't have the full capacity of using all two cameras in full 360, and he didn't get the shot that he wanted, so he went to (laughs) videoblocks.com. You said that was unusual, right? Uh (laughs) I always get my shot, Paul. So he but when I don't. <laughs> but when he doesn't, he goes to videoblocks.com forward slash drone. That's right. <laughs> For royalty-free content. <laughs> Till my heart's content. Did you just rhyme every time? I did not. <laughs> <laughs> Only sometimes. You know, I love sitting in this chair next to you. Yeah, we have a good time. We sure do. Anyway, um... Well, guys, also a big special thank you to our friends at uh, coloradodronechargers.com. If you need a quad charger for your Mavic Pro while you're flying out in the field, or maybe you need a quad charger for your Phantom 4 Pro or your Phantom 3 or your Phantom 4, or for your Phantom 2 or 3, guess what? There are quad chargers for you. Just go to coloradodronechargers.com and use the discount code that is made especially for you as a listener. Just use discount code DRONEU8. Anyway, Rob, why don't you go ahead and play that funky question. Hey, DRONEU. This is Steven from Tennessee. I want to thank you for all the amazing stuff that you have on your website and on YouTube. It's been a real help to me. I actually bought Living the Drone Life, and I've read 90% of it. I got my Part 107. Uh, last year in December and got the Phantom 4 Pro and started shooting immediately. It really has been a great fit for me, uh, drone videography. Uh, But trouble started when I began working for a company in Nashville. I'm not going to say who they are because I don't want to get in trouble. But basically, they contract with different artists and uh, photographers and drone pilots and other people to make um, videos and photos for real estate. And anyhow, I had been working for them for a number of weeks, and I decided it was time to update my demo reel. And so I did update my demo reel, and I thought, well, you know, it's best to just make sure that everything's okay. So I asked them, is it okay if I use the stuff that I did with you in my demo reel? I took, kind of took it for granted that it would be all right, and I was just checking off a box. Well, I got a pretty abrupt response from one of their customer service people that I'm not allowed to use anything that I do with them to promote myself to anyone else. And obviously this kind of ticked me off because this meant that I was pretty much set back in terms of my ability to show off my best work. All my best work was with them, all the most expensive, you know, multi-million dollar properties that I shot. None of that was usable if this was true. My question to you is, is it legal for them to prohibit me from doing this? 
And because I didn't sign any documents that said that specifically, the closest they had was um, a clause, that, the closest thing I'm aware of that said that they retain the rights to the footage that I shoot and send to them. Anyway, if y'all could give me some help here, y'all might know something that I don't know. I just would like to be able to use my demo reel. And if not, you know, I guess that's okay. Anyway, thank y'all. Bye-bye. <laughs> I, say that again. Sucks to suck, bitches. <laughs> <laughs> that is in reference to the question, actually. Yeah. Uh, no, I, the reason I said that is because before I go into who owns rights to what and whatnot, a couple things. He said he didn't sign anything, but that there was a document with a clause saying they retain all rights right. to anything that he shoots and sends to him. So those things are now tied together. But, uh, I'm not a lawyer, but I mean, I did come from a family of lawyers, but I'm not a lawyer. So it's in your blood. It's in my blood. But but on that point, he said he didn't sign anything, but he referenced a clause. But does that clause matter if it's not associated with something he signed? I mean, I don't if, know where that clause is. Again, I'm not clear on that. I think that that would be something for a lawyer to say. But if he didn't sign any document and they're just like, hey, here's a piece of paper with a clause on it. I mean, right. it has no legal bearing whatsoever. Sure. Um, now, that being said, when they said shoot and send to them. So if he didn't send certain footage to them, it's his and he can do whatever the hell he wants with it. Uh, but number two. If you go in the drone pilot field kit, you'll see the commercial photography rights. If you're an employee of a company and you shoot for them, the company owns the copyright to the footage. But if you are a contractor and you are hired as a contractor, the person who shot the footage owns the exclusive rights to the footage. Unless they are specifically signed over. Correct. Right? Uh-huh. Now, that that's a very interesting thing. If the clause doesn't say that they retain exclusive rights to the footage, then guess what? He can totally put the stuff in his demo reel. There's right. no problem about that. Right. Um, and again, this goes back to, you know, guys, you know, we have a whole class on this, on, on pricing real estate and going over real estate. And I talk about this specific issue. Unless you're getting paid 10x the normal price, you do not sign off on exclusive rights, period. Right. You just don't do it. Because you never know. You really when you don't might know. want to use that. Um, Demo and, reel and otherwise. So again, so just uh, rephrasing here, if he didn't send specific files to them, he's golden. Mm -hmm. um, if the clause says that they retain all exclusive rights to the footage and he signed off on that, he's screwed. Um, but if it says they retain rights to the footage then, well, sure, they retain rights to whatever rights he gave them. But as the copyright law states, if he's hired as a contractor, he owns the copyright to the footage. Which, it, it's interesting because it actually speaks to the importance of having very clear contracts. So yes. If you're the company or if you're the pilot in this case and you want to establish what the rights are going to be, I mean, this is a really great lesson in making sure you take care of these things up front. This actually might work in his favor that he didn't take care of it up front because had he brought these issues up, they probably would have had it all spelled out and made him sign something yeah. had they talked about it in the beginning. But um, otherwise, you definitely want to make sure that all of these issues as far as who has rights to what exclusivity, et cetera, is taken care of and established up front. They didn't apparently do that in this case. Yeah, no. Which leaves, which leaves him, Stephen, pretty free to do just about whatever he wants. I think he's good, but in, again, if he signed that document and it says all exclusive rights, he right. kind of screwed himself. But again, and it does say, and what he said that when when he read that question to us is that, uh, like you pointed out, what he sent to them. So there's got to be a ton of stuff that he has that he didn't send to them. Right. And the other point that I think needs to be made here, Paul, and it is something that we've talked about about before, is you have to also weigh just the risk of repercussions, right? I mean... Yeah, one thing I wanted to talk about too was what do you actually say to your client? Because a lot of times, I mean, I hate to say this, but sometimes you've got to... Mm, yeah, I got to be really careful what I say right now because what I want to say and what I can't say. Little, <laughs> Thank you. Little I'm so different, proud of you. <laughs> little different. Um, long story short, I, mean, I, I see where you're going with this and, and I, I don't disagree at all. I think another thing too is if you go back to the client... And, um, you know, it's not something that I think is worth risking the relationship over if right. they're, if they're a good paying client to him, mm -hmm. I would kind of like brush it under the rug and not say anything about it. And I would still put it in my demo reel and I would make yeah. my demo reel private on Vimeo right. and I would still send it to all my clients and say, 
Yeah, that which is another good point because you're not talking about using the footage in another commercial or in some other public venue. You're talking about your reel, which is pretty private, generally speaking, unless mm-hmm. you go public with it. But yeah. generally, that doesn't happen. Well, and I mean, sometimes people do go public with it. They true. make a demo reel and use it for SEO and put it on their website to essentially garnish traffic yeah. and credibility and authority in their area, unless there's a nepotistic uh, film director in your area. So, mm-hmm. yeah, we have that. A big word. It's okay. Nepotistic. <laughs> I hope, yeah, I hope she gets fired anyway. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, <laughs> Anyway, uh, long story short here, I think that he does have some options. Mm -hmm. Um, I think contracts are important. How you deal with this issue with the client is important, especially after they've said that, because if this person that he spoke to is rather busy and fairly busy, chances of it being brought up again are fairly low. Right. Um, Yeah. I'm really surprised there wasn't more documentation up front that they did have him sign. Well, I'm really interested because he said he didn't sign anything, but then he said there was a clause. Yeah. So it curious. brings question in my mind and a little bit of doubt. Like it sounds like he may have signed something, but I, I will say another thing that you guys should do, and I'm actually going to be putting this in the luxury real estate course that we started filming yesterday. Um, in your calendar invites, you can have your calendar invites have a notes section that says, if you agree to this calendar invite, you agree to the terms and conditions of my meetings and mm. my time. This is what Jason does. Interesting. So you can put in there watch that, that essentially, yeah, you do have to watch that guy. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, you, <laughs> I hope he hears this show. <laughs> um, <laughs> you can put in your TNCs a copy of the uh, commercial photography rights um, PDF that essentially details exactly what you do and don't have rights to, that you own exclusive rights. If they want exclusive rights, they can pay X number of dollars uh, in addition. Mm-hmm. So, in fact, we were dealing with this with a recent modeling um, of the golf course here mm-hmm. and we didn't have it in our little spiel. So, yeah. you know, bad on us. We make mistakes too. And that will never happen again. But, um, you know, put your TNCs in your calendar invites, make sure it's clear that by agreeing to the meeting, you agree to the TNCs. And then you always have a record that they agreed to the TNCs by having you go out there. Mm-hmm. So, um, and from what I hear again, I'm not a lawyer, it is legally binding because they, it's like just essentially if you read TNCs and click, I agree. Wow. Digital signature. That's tricky. Mm. But effective. God, I love the digital world. Yeah. So on the flip that, side. I love the digital you... world too, because I can't stand old people. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I love old people. I'm not offended by that. There's some older people, people though that really get under my skin. So like this morning I was getting breakfast and this old lady, she wasn't even that old. She was like maybe like 60 years old. And she just walked right in front of me. I was like, excuse me, I was in line. And she was like, <laughs> like, and then like, as she walked out, I was like, you know what? I understand you have less time left in your life. So oh my it's gosh, all good. Paul, I can't <laughs> believe you're saying that. I, <laughs> I only, okay. I don't, I don't dislike old people in general. I actually really appreciate older people who are wise and they give you advice and they want to help you out in life. But there are some crotchety old mm-hmm's yeah. <laughs> that I really don't like. I'm going to be one. <laughs> Actually, if you saw Rob's Halloween picture on Instagram, uh, he was one. Oh, that's true. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Which was awesome, by the way. Yeah, it was fun. So anyway, uh, I love you old people. So don't write in the show that I hate old people because I don't. It's not general. But And I can tell you from my experience day to day, he's not mean to old people. <laughs> <laughs> we have a lot of respect. Heck, I am an old people. Or at I least am really, an old people. At least really close to it. <laughs> anyway, guys. All right. Well, that is going to do it for us today. If you're old and you're wise and you're nice to people, it sure goes a long way. Anyway. Indeed. And if you're young and patient and forgiving, it sure goes a long way too. So I, ho- I hope I, I hope that evens out the, uh, the balance there. I, pretty close. Yeah. Okay. That's going to do it for us today. My name is Pablo. And I'm Rob. And you're watching... The Ask Drone You podcast. <laughs> <laughs>